Project management. Not all of us have the same abilities, knowledge, talents. For this reason, it's important to assign tasks to whoever can do them better. So the first thing we're going to do when we want to tackle a, a new project is create a team. We have to have a team of people who know how to do certain things. So those of us who must drive process automation and bring together all of these people, we should learn how to delegate these specific activities or tasks to those people who can do them better. For example, here we have a very large team, although sometimes teams are just made by one or two people. But in this case, we have a large team where we have people who are better with user experience, web developers, interface designers, and so on. So these people are going to be in charge of designing the sites, the forms, the portals, the processes, the dashboards, etc. Here we have one person who's pro the project manager. He's also going to do the analysis of the business. So that would be one role doing these two, one person doing these two roles. Here we have uh, two people in charge of quality control. So we have the end users that are going to be sending feedback. And we have someone that's a quality assurance or QA tester. We also have a server administrator and other people that are in the IT team that are going to be in charge of the technical maintenance, of the integrations, and so on. So obviously there's some cases in which we have large teams where we can assign the different activities to those who can do them best. And other times we have smaller teams, or maybe we have to ask for help maybe to the support service of, of our company or maybe the consultancy team. So the first thing we have to do once we have our team ready is talk to the, to the customer, talk to the end user. Sometimes they know what they want. Other times we even have to help them know what they need. To be successful, it's very important to listen to the clients before and after the implementation. We're going to talk about this a bit more later, but the user experience is one of the critical factors for the implementation and for the improvement. So what do you think would happen if companies like Google, Ikea, Toyota would offer their services without listening to their clients? Probably they'd lose their clients or they wouldn't last very long in the market. So it's very important to listen to the customers. First of all, obviously, we're going to listen to these end users or to these customers to learn what about what they need, to learn about you know their business, to analyze their processes and so on. But then we're going to have to be continuously listening and checking and learning about what's happening with those customers in order to fix any bug or maybe improve anything we could actually create better and help them to be more productive. We're going to analyze all the project requirements. So once our customer, I'm talking about our customer, but obviously it could be the same company we're working for. So maybe I'm trying to implement a new project for my own company. So my company is my customer. So other times I might be building solutions for external companies, for other customers. But anyways, in all these cases, it's the same. We have to listen to them once they give us all the feedback once they give us all the information we have to analyze it we have to know what their requirements are make sure we understand them so it's going to be impossible for us to start working until we know absolutely everything that they need so we're going to want to know if they need some processes if they need some dashboards if they need some reports if they need some business rules etc once we know all of this we can start to we can start building or we can start planning. But first we need to know all the requirements. If we start to work without knowing these requirements, it would be as absurd as trying to design a new vehicle without knowing whether it should go by sea, land, air. So this is a very important phase of the project. We need to know things like who's going to be the end user. It's very important to understand that there might be great differences in the implementation and in the, in the design of the solutions based on who's going to be the end user. For example, I might be creating a report for a baker who needs to know the, the temperature of the oven, or I might be creating a report for maybe a stock investor who needs to know the market price at every minute. So it's very important to know our target, our audience, who we're building these solutions for. Where are the goals? We can't focus on what you need the user to do, but we have to focus on what the user wants to achieve with the applications that we're going to build for them. We also have to take into account our limitations. There's always limitations of some type. It could be the company, 
our, our client. They don't have um, enough hours to maybe give us feedback or it might be us or it might be, a, I don't know, for the reasons like uh, maybe the browsing speed, maybe the users are going to be using our applications. They're in remote locations. They don't have a very good internet connection or maybe there's other problems like maybe there's a lack of resources or maybe even the product doesn't have a certain feature we, we, we need. So we have to take into account all these limitations. We also have to create a draft. So once we're analyzing the project requirements, we should create a draft or a document or a POC, something, a proposal that we can give to our customer and they can check it and see if that's exactly what they want. So we're gonna give them a prototype, a mock-up or something. Sometimes we can even develop the proof of concept in the platform because with, with this platform, it's quite easy. You can do it quite fast. So once we have that done and we have the, you know, the approval of our customer, then we can start with a configuration. In a long-term project, it isn't necessary to cover everything at once. It's much better to break it down into short sprints and focus on getting the approval for each one of these deliveries. To do this, usually what we want to do is create a draft, a functional document, or maybe an SLA that includes all the characteristics or the functionalities and the scope of that short delivery or sprint that we're going to deliver. Why is this important? Why don't we want to try to get an approval for a huge project that may, might require months or years to be developed? Because it's very important to give solutions to our customer as soon as possible. If we try to tackle a huge scope with a whole bunch of processes, a whole bunch of interfaces, this might take us some time to develop, even though it's just a couple of months, but still our customers just gonna see paper promises, but they're not really gonna have anything tangible that they can start using. So it's very important to start with something short. Okay, we're gonna deliver this, maybe not an entire process, but at least we can automate part of it. And once you've been able to deliver that specific functionality, then you can continue with the next. And then you can start adding up with all of these different sprints until you've completed the entire project. So it's very important to get approval from the customer, but it would be more convenient to try to get approval for some smaller projects, at least initially, when the customer isn't very used to using this product. Once, obviously, if they're confident with the product and they already know it's something that can deliver, then you might wanna tackle larger projects or projects that might take some a couple of months or a couple of weeks before delivering it to the customer. Here we can see that once we've gotten the approval of the customer, we're gonna to have to organize our team. Remember initially we were talking about the team and the different people who are gonna be working on different activities depending on their talents or what they've studied or what they know how to do best. So in the long-term project, it is very important to divide the work into sprints, as we just said, and assign each employee with activities that best fits their abilities. While a team member who's very good at analyzing processes draws the diagram, some other members of our team could be doing some other things, for example, designing forms, uh, maybe adding integrations with external applications and so on. So more than one person can work on, on a project at a time. Now, once we've completed the analysis phase, it's time to start designing the solutions. Here, I'm not gonna enter into a lot of detail because Basically, this is what we've been learning how to do throughout all, all the different courses. We've been learning how to draw the diagrams, how to define all the attributes, how to simulate these processes, how to execute them, how to fix them, and so on. So this is something we've been learning throughout all, all the courses. I'm not gonna enter into detail here. But let's say, for example, our project includes three processes. They're gonna be used by 1,000 users, and then there's maybe a couple of reports that need to be used by 10 users. So now that we know the scope, we, know, we have all the information, we already had our meetings with the customer. Now we can start designing, now we can start building our applications, our reports, or whatever, we, whatever the customer needs. Finally, once we've done this, we're going to deliver the product. So in each, in each delivery, we're gonna learn more about the client, we're gonna learn more about the product, we're gonna learn more about our own capabilities. Usually there's not, two projects that are exactly the same. Usually all the projects are different. But obviously we are going to learn a lot of lessons while we're building these, these applications and we should take them into account. We should consider them in order to improve in our next implementations. This way we're gonna constantly be improving our methodology.